welcome to our webinar, Reaching Specifiers with Reba CPD, where we will discuss how you can use CPD in your sales and marketing strategy and target specifiers with your products. I'm Izzy Herrera, Head of Marketing at MBS, and I'm hosting today's webinar. Firstly, a few bits of housekeeping. So the webinar, we're aiming for it to last around 50 minutes. Attendees' microphones are all muted, and you can ask questions using the question box on your screen, and then we'll follow up with you after the session. The webinar aims to equip product manufacturers with the tools and strategies necessary to maximise their efforts when offering specifiers CPD and how to do this effectively. Joining me today is Katie Wilson, Senior Account Manager at MBS, Eva Wood, Founder of Edify Content Studio, and Sarah Hooley, Content Manager at Edify Content Studio. During the webinar, you'll get an overview of the Reba CPD Providers Network, and the continued collaboration between Reba and NBS, highlighting the pivotal role that CPD plays in professional growth. You'll also learn practical tips and insights into creating engaging CPD and understanding the importance of a robust CPD marketing strategy. You'll get some insight on how to make the most of your CPD materials to drive awareness and engagement with specifiers. I'll also be asking um, a couple of questions to our experts. Firstly, I'm going to just do a quick introduction to MBS for those who may not know us. So MBS is a specification solution and product data platform, which for over 50 years has been helping the construction industry build better. In 2020, MBS became part of the Big Factor Group, um, which is a leading data and software provider to the global construction industry. For architects, engineers, designers and contractors, we provide a cloud-based specification platform MBS Chorus and a consultancy service, MBS Schumann. For building product manufacturers, you can put your products on MBS Source, placing them directly in front of specifiers at the time they're making product decisions. We have around 3,600 specifiers, consisting of 98% of the AJ Top 100 architects. So that was a quick introduction on MBS. Now I'm going to move on to why do architects need CPD? So there was a big change this year. Um, in January 2024, the Architect Registration Board, the ARB, made it mandatory for all registered architects to undertake CPD to ensure continuous learning and development. This showcases CPD's importance to construction professionals and means the audience is willing and listen, ready, willing to listen and learn. This also sees a change in the audience in that it's grown. Um, and the reason CPD is there is to ensure competence, skills, safety, capability, making sure people are up to date and common standards. Prior to this, REBA already had mandatory requirements for their REBA, REBA members. So their um, requirements are 35 hours of CPD must be recorded online um, over a full year. They do audit this CPD. Um, and there can be suspension or expulsion for non-compliance. Reba take this very, very seriously. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Katie, who's going to talk to you about the Reba CPD Providers Network and our partnership with Reba. Um, thanks very much for the introduction, Izzy. Um, firstly, hello, everyone. I'm Katie Wilson, Senior Account Manager at MBS. Um, and I'm going to be speaking to you today um, in a bit more detail about the Reba CPD Providers Network. Um, so this year will be the network's 30th anniversary and um, for 30 years the network has been educating architects on a wide range of topics um, in various material types and formats. Um, the Reba CPD Providers Network uh, consists of over 500 manufacturers, suppliers, uh, training companies and advisory organisations um, who provide Reba approved uh, CPD to architects and other specifiers. Um, so our providers uh, use their membership to uh, the network as part of their marketing strategy uh, for four key uh, four key reasons. Um, firstly, to educate the industry. So Izzy touched earlier uh, on how it's uh, more important than ever for architects to take part in CPD to develop their skills and competency. And our providers are creating and delivering um, new material every year to help provide this, um, this vital education. 
Um, also, um, it's the the ability to to build relationships. So um, the network provides a unique opportunity to develop relationships with specifiers. So it allows you to get um, right in front of specifiers, whether that be online or face to face, uh, with a view to build long lasting relationships with, that will hopefully um, hopefully result in future specifications. Um, the network also allows our providers to position themselves as thought leaders in their field by providing education on their particular areas of expertise. Um, and lastly, um, it allows them to build brand awareness. So you can raise your brand, um, your brand profile, um, and uh, not only through the association with the the Reba brand, but also due to the exposure that you get, um, that that you gain through RebaCBD.com, MBS Source, uh, and the MBS and Reba marketing channels. So the Reba CBD core curriculum defines uh, ten key mandatory topics of yearly study uh, within an architect CPD obligations. All chartered members are expected to obtain at least two hours of learning in each of the 10 every year. Um, material is searchable via these categories, so it's recommended that our providers try to cover as many of these curriculum topics as possible. So many of you who are not part of the network may ask the question, why would I bother having my content approved by the RLBA when I can deliver on accredited content? Um, there are many, um, many benefits to having REBA approved content and being part of the network. The first being the association with the REBA brand. It's highly trusted and recognized within the industry. Our navigating the REBA CPD landscape report um, found that 83% of specifiers felt it was important for CPD to be assessed and approved by the RIBA. Um, and this is because the network produces quality content that specifiers can trust to be educational, accurate, and well-regulated. Our providers have exclusive um, use of the highly recognized REBA logo which allows them to stand out amongst the large quantities of materials uh, we have available to specifiers. Our report also found that 96% of specifiers recognize the REBA logo, whilst 92% have confirmed to have taken part in a REBA approved CPD. There are additional perks that come with um, membership, including the opportunity for, to present at our exclusive REBA CPD events, um, such as our online and face-to-face -face, um, expos. Members will also have assistance um, promoting their CPDs through rebacpd.com, MBS Source, our Reba CPD Showcase, and more recently, um, an e-bulletin within the, the Reba Journal. Our report also found that 73% of um, professionals taking part in a Reba approved CPD go on to specify um, a product from the, from the provider in the future. So some top tips for making the most of your membership. Firstly, we recommend you refresh your CPD content. So keep reinventing your story by um, and messages to be relevant and revisit practices. Um, offer multiple CPD topics and utilize your uh, full yearly allowance. We also recommend that you can offer materials in multiple different formats. So you can convert your already approved um, CPD seminar to uh, a video, an article, a podcast. Um, you can even uh, deliver, deliver a factory tour. Um, we also recommend you show off your approved status um, through use of the, the highly recognized Reba CPD logo. Um, so you can use that on your website, your email signatures, your marketing materials. You can even print it off um, and uh, you know make it part of your banners at events. Um, also, you need to understand the, the architecture landscape. Um, you should stay ahead and help relationships with specifiers by understanding the context in which they work. Um, and and what changes are on the horizon. So you can attend our uh, twice yearly CPD form, uh, which is, is an event, especially for Reba CPD providers to find this out, um, as well as getting tips on delivering and better marketing your CPDs. We recommend you take a, a, take a targeted approach, um, research and target the right practices um, appropriate for your specialism. Uh, some practices will have specialism sectors and knowing who they are and what they do can certainly help. Lastly, um, as well as promoting your CPD through your own social media channels, um, your email channels and sales teams, MBS uh, can also offer a mar partner marketing pack, um, which has a range of marketing services that are available to you. So you can sponsor a webinar, um, you can be part of our newsletter, we can do social media uh, um, posts on your behalf. Um, all these services can be utilized to um, promote your CPD. So if you have any questions about that, please contact your MBS account manager. 
So on to the exciting parts. Um, we, you know, we've we've heard a lot about the importance of CPD for architects, and we want to make it as easy as possible to access um that educational content. So we spent a lot of time over the last few months creating a brand new website for RebusCPD.com, which we hope to launch at the end of this year. Whilst I don't have a live, a live version of the website today, I do have some visuals to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, so this will be the new Reba CPD homepage. Um, we've been working really hard to update the feel, the look, and the usability uh, uh, for specifiers. You can see on the visual here, we have features such as featured CPD and new CPDs, just to make it even easier for specifiers to discover your content. Some more visuals here, um, we have enhanced the search functionality by updating the filtering tools. So they can filter by different content types, uh, by classification, core curriculum area, um, making it easier for them to navigate through the website and reach the right providers. Uh, the site is also well linked with the Reba CPD Academy, which allows specifiers to easily book Reba CPD events, such as online or in-person expos, which should hopefully mean attendance rates to those events rises even further. So not only are we updating the rebacpd.com website, we're also integrating rebacpd more heavily with the MBS Source website. MBS Source has a huge user base and we're using that to our advantage to help promote your CPD content even further. The idea of Source is to be a one-shot stop uh, from construction of uh, construction product information that will call, uh, cover all stages of the project timeline. So including your materials um, is a way to make sure we are covering those very early discovery and conception stages of the timeline by allowing them to educate themselves on your products before going on to specify them from the very same website. Uh, some of you will uh, know that all providers have a profile on MBS Source. Um, however, at the moment, this just consists of a hyperlink to the CPD provider's webpage. Um, we will now be promoting your CPDs a lot more heavily. Um, so as you uh, can see that we will be hosting information on the materials directly within the search results on source. Uh, so to search for products um, or topics, they can use the filter uh, to bring up results for CPD materials that relate to this search. As you can see, the Reba logo will be really visible um, on the search. So they can they know that they can trust the, the material will be of high quality content. Um, and they can also filter by manufacturer content type and book directly uh, through the link provided on the page. In the Browse by Manufacturer tab of MBS Source, they will now be able to filter down to show manufacturers that, um, that only offer uh, REBA approved CPD. And in terms of how it will look on your MBS Source webpage, um, there will now be an additional tab that will display all of the CPD materials uh, you offer, along with a quick summary um, of what they can expect to learn from it. Another really nice feature um, is that you will be able to link your CPDs to relevant product pages within the associated content section. So just as you MBS Source customers are used to doing with any relevant literature or case studies, um, your source page will also show if you've booked to present at any upcoming expos um, and they'll be able to book directly uh, from here. So hopefully you'll see that um, we have been working really hard to increase the exposure uh, you as a brand and your materials get through being part of the network. Uh, we expect these improved interfaces will see a rise in CPD bookings as the process of searching, finding and selecting your CPDs becomes a lot more seamless. We've talked a lot about how we're going to be um, improving the user experience for the specifier, uh, which will obviously benefit our providers um, as the exposure to your CPDs increases. However, the last big change I wanted to announce to you today is a change to um, how you will manage your sub uh, subscription and materials going forward. So we have plans to um, retire the old manufacturers my account platform, which is currently where you find guidance on creating your materials, um, and instead integrating the Reba CPD um, uh, within our partner platform instead. So this will allow you to manage your MBS source and your Reba CPD subscriptions in one place. Um, we will be revamping our material um, and assessment guidance content and moving it into the partner platform um, to be used and downloaded from here. And it will also be easier than ever for you to register your CPD bookings to gain valuable feedback from those who take part in them, allowing you to constantly um, improve how you deliver uh, your materials. 
You'll be able to submit your materials uh, for approval directly on the platform and request a review, as opposed to the usual process of submitting your CPD to our assessment team via email, um, as well as being able to update the material, um, the, up, the material details and imagery from here too. So uh, for our providers, um, a lot of exciting updates for you. Um, as I said, we are planning to release these towards the back end of the year. However, if you would like to be updated um, on the progress of these changes, I would urge you to reach um, out to your account manager directly um, who can keep you informed of more specific timelines um, as and when we have them and can answer any questions you may have. Um, for those who aren't currently part of the network and are interested in hearing more, um, Feel free to contact me. My contact details will be available later on in the presentation. Um, and if you're already an MBS customer um, and you're not yet subscribed to the Reba CPD Providers Network, you can also reach out to your account manager for that one as well. Um, so I'm just going to hand over now to Eva, um, who is going to be talking to you about uh, seven tips for CPD success. Okay. Um, thank you to the NBS and to the Reba CPD Providers um, Network for welcoming us here today. Uh, my name is Eva Wood and I am the founder of Edify Content Studio. We are an agency specialised in researching and developing content for building materials and um, interior product brands. Um, we combine technical knowledge um, with marketing and communications knowledge uh, and, and also a, a solid understanding of what specifiers need. And we work with brands to create CPDs, um, case studies and thought leadership pieces such as white papers or um, blog posts or blog articles, for example. So today you'll hear from me, Eva, and Sarah Holy. So we both have um, lots of experience of working for manufacturers. I have a background in design engineering and have worked for manufacturers in Sweden and the UK. Uh, and Sarah have, as I said, lots of marketing experience. I think it's over 17 years working for manufacturers within bathrooms, within bricks and tiles. So we're going to cover seven tips um, and we're going to look at the whole process really so developing cpds launching and presenting and alongside my uh, tips and also sarah's tips and um, we're also going to show you some of the cheesiest stock photography that you can find online so if you're not interested in cpds then I'm not sure why you're here, but if you're not interested in CPDs, you can just enjoy the stock photography because it's pretty good. Right, number one. So now we're talking about the kind of developing stage. Um, so the first point or the first tip is what are you talking about? So this is all about getting clear on what you're going to talk about before you start writing. So you really want to have a clearly defined topic um, and it's important to consider, by all means, brainstorm and come up with lots of different topics and lots of things that you want to cover, but it is important to select one topic. If you have lots of things that you want to cover in your CPDs, then you can always develop more than one CPD. You can have a CPD program, um, but clearly define topics. So, so pick one thing um, and it's okay that it's quite narrow. And then um, work out the narrative. So through these tips, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the process that we use when we develop CPDs. And we often work with a storyboard at this stage. So, well, and it doesn't have to be pretty, but it's good to, to have a, a visual of the narrative. So what is the story that you're going to tell? So what are the sections of the CPD and what are the key points throughout these sections? So work out the narrative. And as I said, less is more. I think it's perfectly okay to pick one topic. Um, your, your architects listening to the CPD are not going to be able to take in lots and lots of advice and lots of different topics. So it's important to keep it nice and clear. So the second tip is um, all together now. So get the team right. A CPD has to be a team effort. 
So you ideally want, obviously, marketing usually, and I think this is why CPDs can be quite tricky to develop for some for some brands because it is a, it, it's often developed by marketing, but is also obviously a sales tool. Your your sales team are going to be using this um, and they're going to be presenting and also you want lots of technical details in there so so we suggest rather than kind of working in a in a siloed um, manner um, we suggest getting a team together a CPD working team and ideally include people from marketing from sales or future CPD presenters um, and also from the technical team so at this stage, you might already want to identify who is going to be presenting the CPD. Um, and I'll come back to this a little bit later on, but you might not want all of your sales team um, presenting. Some people are, are just not good at presenting, or they don't feel com comfortable presenting these type of, um, this type of content. So, so define who's going to present and ideally include one or two of those people into the, the CPD working party, if you like. Um, and also Katie mentioned earlier um, that it's important to understand the archi architecture landscape. So who knows the audience best? This might not be, well, often it is someone in the sales team, but it might also be someone uh, from your technical team or um, or maybe a showroom manager who meets a lot of specifiers. So have a think about who knows the audience best. There might be several people who know the audience and include those people into the team as well. Okay, so those two points were kind of to do with developing and now we move on to a little bit more about launching. So when you launch the CPD, and as I said, in our experience, usually it's the marketing team who are developing the CPD. So uh, you need to think about handing this over properly to the CPD presenters. One or two of the presenters might have been involved in the whole process, but, but maybe not all of them. So um, how you hand this over will for sure affect the success of the CPD. You need to make sure that people, future CPD presenters, feel complete ownership of the content. And that's, I would suggest, it's not just the case of sending them the, the CPD and here you go, but maybe doing a training session um, where you, you practice presenting between you and maybe also for the CPD writer to, to talk through and say, oh, I put this slide here because I thought that works better, or I, put, I included this piece of information because I, X, Y, Z. So the future presenter understands the content and understands why the story and the narrative flows as it does. Uh, and also you could do a test run, especially if you have a, a, an architect or an architecture practice that you are very friendly with and you know them, it's always good to do a test run and say, can you guys give me some honest feedback on this new CPD? So that's that's always worth considering. And then content is king. So Sarah will touch a little bit more on this in her presentation about um, the marketing strategy, but I'll just mention it here. So there's loads of juicy content in the CPD and you can use this. You can use it as a, as a source for your other marketing um, or you can use it as a starting point. So perhaps there were things that you wanted to include in the CPD, but you just it was just too, uh, um, it became too long. So you can use that to, to spin off. And I know Sarah will talk about that. Um, and also make it a priority throughout the company to understand the content. And we'll touch on that too. And um, so the, the content, was we, we've kind of moved on to the launching of the CPD. And this is also, um, no, sorry, now we're moving on to the presenting of the CPD. Um, and this is actually, it's about presenting, but some of these points you can probably bear in mind when you're writing, when you're developing the CPD too. So number one, it's, it's the performance. Um, if you, this, so a CPD presentation is very different, I would say, from a from a general or from a normal sales meeting or, or sales call, because it's all about you teaching the audience. So you you have you have the stage, 
or the presenter basically has the stage and they have to own that stage. It's a performance. And um, so if you think back to your best, I don't know, tutor at university or teacher in school, you know, they, they come in and they hold the room and they give their lecture um, and they talk about something that they're really passionate uh, about and excited about. So, so think in a similar in a similar way here. You want your CPD presenter to come in and, and do some storytelling, tell the story of the CPD in an excited way. And this links back to why I said that maybe not all people are suitable as CPD presenters. We often see that manufacturers say all of our sales team, they're all going to be trained in the CPD and they're all going to be presenting, but some people are better performers than others. So we have also seen manufacturers um, have just one CPD presenter and then another salesperson might come with them for the for the CPD um, session, but they have one person who goes travels a lot, but who goes all over the country and presents CPDs. So that might be, you know, if you have someone who is a performer in your team, it might be better for that person to be the CPD presenter. Um, and then also, and I guess this is where it ties back to the to the writing or the, the developing of the CPD. It will be a much more interesting story if you can include some examples or anecdotes or case studies. So someone who is the performer, someone who is passionate and someone who can bring all of those examples and anecdotes to life um, would be a great CPD presenter. So when you're developing a CPD, make sure that you think about including um, case studies and little, little things that have happened to you, some things that might have gone wrong, some things that might have been a success, but that will make the story much more interesting. Okay, and this is also to do with um, the presenting, although some of this you can bear in mind when you're developing the CPD. So you don't want the audience to get lost. And you have to consider that often a CPD is during a lunch hour for an architect. They have a busy day. We all have busy days. Uh, they might have had lots of meetings in the morning. So, you know, it's their break in a way, their lunch break. So yes, they're there to learn something, but they don't want to be overwhelmed. Um, and as I said earlier, it's probably better to, if you have lots to say, probably better to split it into several CPDs. Uh, so think about, you know, a confused mind will say no. So at no, no point do you want to confuse the audience. So be really clear when you're presenting, you might want to recap and say, okay, we've covered section one. And now we're going to move on to, to this thing. So it's really clear where you are in the presentation so people don't get lost and feel like, oh, this is a slideshow that's never going to end. Um, and when you're developing the CPD and designing the CPD, you might include some visual cues too. Maybe in the corner you have, um, you have the, say, four sections of your CPD and, and you clearly show where you are. So people know, okay, it's, we're halfway through uh, and then I can get back to my busy day. And also think about pace. So this is for presenting. When, when you're presenting, think about, you know, some slides you might want to make a little bit more energetic and some slides you might have to go through a little bit slower because there's more technical information. Uh, but also when you're developing the CPD, ha include some slides where the speaker script is just one sentence because then you can, you can kind of get the pace going a bit faster through that section. And then you might want to have some slides where where the speaker script is a bit longer, so you stay on that slide for a bit for a bit longer. So that and that will make the story and the whole presentation more interesting rather than kind of the same pace throughout. So yeah, so that was uh, tip number seven, the six. Number seven, and my last one is, and this goes for the whole, both for the well, the developing and, and the launching and for sure for the presenting part of the CPD, make it fun and easy. So as I said, have a really clear topic, make sure you have the right presenter. And again, it is, it's a one hour session. You don't want to overwhelm people. You don't want people to think, oh gosh, that was, that was a bit much. You want people to think, oh, that was great. I'd like to hear more from that person. I'd like to speak to them again, or I'd like to ask them to come back for another CPD. So, so make sure it's fun and easy for the audience and also for the presenters. So they're actually enjoying 
presenting it. So you don't want 60 slides and you can see that the presenter is just kind of, oh, how will I get through all of these slides? Um, it's much better to have a short CPD that your presenter really loves presenting and the audience finds fun and, and easy to take in. Right, so just to summarize my seven points then. So number one, what are you going to talk about? Really define the topic and the narrative. Number two, make sure there's a team effort and really think about who you're gonna include within that team. And number three, the handover. Make sure that there's a, a clear kind of ownership, you're passing over the ownership to the presenter. Um, and then number four, maximize the content, which is all part of the marketing strategy, which will uh, Sarah will come to. Number five, it's a performance and really think about what that means and how your presenter is going to present the CPD. And number six, make sure you don't get lost in too many slides and too many technical details. Um, it's much better to, to chop it up into several CPDs and make it nice and clear. And lastly, make it fun and easy. Thank you. I'll hand over to Sarah now. Thank you very much, Eva. So my name's Sarah, Content Manager for Edify Content Studio. Um, Eva's taken you through our seven tips for CPD success. I'm now going to focus on how to get the most out of marketing your CPD. So you've done a lot of hard work in creating it. We want to make sure that hard work pays off and that your CPD reaches your intended audience. So some more top tips for you. I've got three for you this time. So in the next 10 minutes or so, um, firstly, we're going to have a look at the importance of having a robust strategy for your CPD and what does that actually mean in practice. And then we're going to look at owning the subject um, and how to use that to your advantage. And then we're going to finish by exploring a few of the different ways that you can promote your CPD. So let's talk strategy. And firstly, just to say, I'm not going to talk about how to create a marketing strategy. That will be teaching some of you to suck eggs. And if you're not sure on strategy, there's lots of online resources that can help you. So instead, I'm going to focus on how to make sure that whatever strategy you do create is really robust. And by robust, I mean that it's most likely to lead to success. So any strategy that you create is only going to be a success if you have buy-in from across the business. So Eva mentioned about um, creating that, that team that works on the CPD. Keep that team or you know, maybe add some people into it for creating that strategy for success. So that might be your head of sales or if you've got a head of specification, for example, or if you have a showroom, you could include your showroom manager. Uh, and getting the buy-in from these colleagues is going to put you in the best position for having buy-in from the rest of the business. So, for example, if your head of sales isn't really bothered about your CPD, it's unlikely that your sales team uh, are going to be bothered either. And if they're not bothered, it's not likely to be a success. So our recommendation is that you um, actually make CPD presentations part of the KPIs for the CPD presenters. And we generally find with clients that if if they've been involved in the process and um, they feel confident thanks to that training session that Eva covered earlier, actually having a target put in place is actually quite welcomed um, by the presenters. And while we're talking about KPIs, um, we also recommend setting your own as a marketing team. Um, this is how you, you, know, you can measure the success of your CPD by setting one or more uh, KPIs. This might be linked to the CPD presenters KPI or you might choose to focus around something more linked to your marketing activities. So for example, how many inquiries have you generated for your CPD? But it is really important to have KPI to know whether it's been success or not. And then just to say, I think sometimes we can get a little, little bit blinkered and think, well, we've created the CPD and we've handed it over to the CPD presenters, everything's good. Just remember that there's probably gonna be quite a few people in your company that talk to specifiers as part of their job role, but won't be presenting the CPD. Don't forget about these people. They can still have a part to play in helping to promote it. Um, think of colleagues, for example, in customer service, um, technical, or maybe if you have site support, um, make sure that these people know enough about your CPD that they could share some details about it if the opportunity presented, it, presented itself. 
So an idea here that some of our clients do um, is they actually hold an, an internal launch um, of their CPD before they launch it externally. And this is where everyone in the company has an opportunity to hear the CPD. And just still on strategy for this slide, um, just to say that make sure that strategy includes the full process of the CPD. And by that, I mean um, from sign up right through to follow up. Um, so not just the presentation itself, it's really important to include the full process as part of your strategy. And this is because even the best CPD can be let down if you have a really laborious or tricky um, sign up process or you don't effectively follow up. You might have the specifier's attention for the CPD presentation. They're going to go back to their desk, back to their busy working lives. So if we don't follow up effectively, um, you know, we might be quickly forgotten. So in terms of the sign up, we would recommend a really quick and easy to complete online form or a dedicated email address that needs to be monitored regularly and dealt with swiftly, ideally both of those. And then for follow up, we recommend not actually sharing the full CPD with the specifiers. Let's be honest, they're not likely to look through your entire CPD to find maybe the one useful bit that they really wanted to find. So we recommend following up with a um, useful summary of the key points from the CPD. And ideally, this should look really beautiful and be designed in line with the graphic identity of the CPD. And then just to say about a marketing plan, whilst the CPD definitely needs its own marketing plan, don't forget that it's part of a bigger picture. It definitely needs to be part of an overall strategy for your specification marketing. If you think that just having a CPD is going to bring you lots of specifications, unfortunately, the world's not quite that simple. Your CPD needs to sit alongside everything else that a specifier is going to expect from you. So some quite obvious things, for example, you know, um, samples that are easy to request and are sent out quickly, easy to access technical information, comprehensive support and uh, warranties and so on. So you might catch the interest of a specifier through having your CPD. But if the rest of what they expect isn't there, you're not going to get much further than that initial interest. So just to recap in terms of having a robust strategy, you need to make sure that your CPD is a, uh, being a success is a priority across the business. So think about KPIs and don't forget those non-presenters. And then create a marketing plan for the CPD specifically, that's important, but don't forget that it needs to form part of that bigger picture of your specification marketing, just to make sure you're meeting the specifier's needs. So let's move on to talk about owning the subject. Um, so hopefully you've chosen a topic that is relevant to your audience and also one that you want to be seen as a thought leader on. Um, it's likely if you're anything like us when we create a CPD that you've put a lot of time and effort into choosing that topic, researching it and then writing the CPD about it. And as Eva mentioned earlier, there might even be some content that didn't quite make it into the CPD and we don't want to let that go to waste. So this owning the subject is all about using what you've learned in other areas of your marketing. Don't just keep it limited to the CPD. So by owning the subject, um, think about sharing snippets on your social media. Uh, you might even use it as a starting point for a LinkedIn article or a blog post. Or if you have a showroom, you could consider hosting a roundtable discussion around the subject. And all of this is about establishing yourself as an authority on the subject, and it's all going to help generate interest in your CPD. Which brings me on to promotion. Promote, promote, promote. Why have I put it three times? I think it can sometimes be easy to think we've done a few social media posts when we launched the CPD, it's on our website, and it's been in a few email newsletters. Great, great work, everyone should know about it. Again, the world's not quite that simple. So we recommend um, frequent and regular promotion of your CPD. And you need to catch your audience at the right time. And by that, I mean, they need to be looking for a CPD and they need to have an interest in the topic of your CPD. So let's say that your, your CPD is on a hospitality related topic. A specifier might see your social media post, but at that time, they're really focused on residential projects. So it's just not going to be of interest to them at that time. 
six or 12 months down the line, bingo. We've caught them at a time where they're working on a hospitality project. It's more likely to be of interest. So keep promoting it is the key message here. And to do that, you could find new ways and new angles to promote the CPD. So, for example, have you perhaps received some lovely feedback um, from a specifier about your CPD that you could share? Or you've got a really good photograph of a CPD presentation taking place? Or even is there something relevant going on in the news that you could use as a reason to talk about your CPD? And then in terms of raising awareness, uh, we recommend holding a regular CPD session on a set date and time. Most of our clients have now moved um, through COVID. It was you know, weekly, fortnightly. Most have now settled on monthly, which seems about the right uh, frequency. And this can either be online, it can be in a showroom if you have one, or it can be a combination of the two. And this is all about promoting the fact that you have the CPD. Um, of course, you want people to attend, but even if attendance is low, it's raising awareness that you've got the CPD and a specifier might see it and actually book in a separate session with you. And then similar to that is tying into events and exhibitions. We've got lots of those um, in this sector. So we'd really highly recommend um, linking in with these. So for example, not too long ago, we had Clark and Well Design Week and uh, our clients use this as an opportunity to host a CPD um, every day as part of their Clark and Well Design Week programme. Again, it's all about raising awareness that you've got that CPD. A specifier might come into your showroom for another um, activity or talk that you've got going on, but they may see that you've got the CPD and inquire about it um, and want to have it another time. So to summarise from me, um, it's so, so important to have that robust strategy that includes buy-in from across the business and covers the full process from sign up to follow up. Um, we recommend using that wealth of knowledge that you've now got on the subject of your CPD in other areas of your marketing. And then regularly promote your CPD and do that in different ways to generate interest and raise awareness. That's it from us. Um, thank you very much for um, giving us the opportunity to share some of our um, hints and tips with you today. Just popped our details on the slide and um, just to say we do have a monthly newsletter. We share more of our hints and tips um, for specification marketing. So we'd love to send that out to all of you. So just head to our website and scroll down. You'll see a sign up form. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I think we've got time for a few questions. Thank you to our brilliant speakers. Um, it's now a chance for me to ask our, some questions to our experts. So open to all really, so feel free to jump in. Um, what makes a standout piece of CPD content for you? Um, I'm, I'll start if that's okay. Um, I'll, well, I think the number one thing is that it's useful for the audience. So this ties in with researching and understanding the audience and understanding what they need to know about your products. Um, and again, even if it's just one really useful thing that they've learned, that's fine. But I think a standout CPD will be really useful for a specifier. And at the same time, it will be fun and easy as in easy to take in, easy to remember. Um, I guess it ties in. So if, if something is easy to remember, it's going to be more useful for it because it's going to stay with you. Um, so that's why I think a standout CPD is. I think I'd probably just add to that, um, that don't forget the importance of how it looks. People can, can get quite tied up with, um, you know, the, the script and what goes into it from a content um, point of view. But if it doesn't look engaging, I'm sure we've all watched presentations that are, you know, just not been designed. And I think, um, you know, the, the audience are visual. So make it a visual presentation. That's also going to make, make it more memorable as well. Excellent. Um, next question I have is what advice would you give a smaller business on which marketing channels to focus on to drive delegates? Sarah, do you want to? Yeah, I think, yeah, I'll take this one. Um, I think if you're a smaller business, I think really it's your team 
like people we always say people buy from people um it sounds it is cliche but i think that's really important so you actually focus on supporting your team and making sure that they've got the right tools to go out and deliver the cpd um which might be a surprising answer you might expect us to say linkedin or, or something like that but yeah i think actually focusing on the team and making sure that they're comfortable confident and got what they need to go out and uh, deliver the cpd yeah i agree i think you can get really far with a team who if you know they are talking to specifiers as part of their job daily hopefully um if they're really excited that excitement is gonna it's gonna it's gonna be contagious and specifiers will be excited about uh, booking in booking in a cpd um so yeah if you if you don't have any marketing budget then then your team can take it quite far i think Um, I've got, do you think there is a difference in how to present online versus offline and should businesses be offering both? Shall I take a first, Eva? Yeah, go, go. Yeah. Um, yes, I think there is definitely a difference. Um, if you're presenting on online, generally we say go for a bit shorter. Um, it's much harder to keep your attention on sort of a screen than if you're in a room um, with people and, and potentially samples being handed round. Um, I think businesses should offer both. I think we need to be flexible. And I think there's, um, if people are going to have a look at the recent survey that you guys did on behalf of Reba, I think there's some nice stats there around the mix of, of how people take in CPD. But for us um, and our clients from experience, it's always better to aim for in-person. Um, I don't think you can beat that engagement and, and sort of um, just the atmosphere of being in a room and learning together. Um, and obviously for a lot of manufacturers samples are quite an important part of the process and sort of being able to touch and feel so obviously you can't you can't do that online so yeah i think yes there is a difference businesses should be offering both but it's yeah, important to be flexible yeah i think it's really good you mentioned um the research we've done because like before covid uh, specifiers was even then were asking for online content and online CPD and then obviously um, throughout COVID that was sort of the only way to kind of continue um, offering CPD but I think um, our late you know our latest research is really kind of showing that that's still still there is still a place for in person um, but there's definitely a need for um, online and I really do strongly believe it's like offering both you know even our own marketing strategy and marketing like activation is offering both doing webinars but we've also got an in-person um program of events as well um so yeah i think yeah for me I, I think it is offering both um to make sure you're kind of maximizing your membership and, and sort of targeting as many specifiers as you can and the last question i had was what advice do you have for someone just starting out on their cpd journey um, i would say don't be, well, don't be daunted by um, the task of creating a CPD because, so we work with lots of manufacturers creating CPDs and really the knowledge is there within the company because you are going to be talking about something to do, obviously to do with your product or, or you're going to be talking about your expertise. So you know this, you as a company will know, will have this information um and you as a company are already going to be you're already going to be passionate about it um and also if you again if you research and if you really define what you're going to be covering and really hit the spot on on you know the, the key learnings then specifiers will need this too um you're going to give them something that they need so so you know this information and you're already passionate about it and specifies need this information. So it's not, it's just a case of packaging everything together and making it nice and clear um, and making it nice and visual, like Sarah said. But it's, it, it might sound like a big task creating a CPD, but a CPD can be fairly short and you can, you don't have to go out and research lots of new information. You can talk to your technical team or you can yeah talk to your team. But so, so you've got this is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. Anybody got anything else they wanted to add? Brilliant. Well, thank you very much um, for the, you know, taking part today. Um,
I would just put up some contact details now. Um, so if you wanted to find out more about the REBA CPD Providers Network, um, there's some contact details there for Katie Wilson. Um, there's also our manufacturers at thembs.com um, and also our website, thembs.com forward slash manufacturers, where you can find out more information. And if you wanted to find out more from Edify Content Studio, um, Eva's details are just up there as well. So thank you very much for joining us today.